Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Kyle Norman. After a brief message from one of our sponsors, we will read today's Bible verse, which is Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Hi, I'm Trisha. And I'm Michelle. We're the hosts of the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. Reading the Bible every day can be a daunting task, and that's why we're here to be your cheerleaders. We want to encourage you to see the bigger picture of the Bible, to see God working in your life. For the Daily Bible Podcast, go to lifeaudio.com and check us out. We have encouragement waiting for you. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth, as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate his acts and teachings. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Matthew 16, verse 13. When I was in seminary, I took part in a mission trip to a small town in northern Ontario. It was an evangelistic crusade of sorts. As part of this program, a group of us walked around the downtown streets with a video camera, and we asked people one question. Who is Jesus? We asked. We received a wide variety of responses. Some responded by saying that Jesus is Lord, Jesus is God, Jesus is the one that we pray to. Others suggested that Jesus was just a character in an elaborate story, a person of make-believe or myth. Others suggested that Jesus was a human teacher who lived long ago, a bygone sage who is alive no longer. The question of who Jesus is is perhaps the deepest and most important question that we can ask as we grow in our faith. This is why Jesus asked the disciples who people were saying he was. What do people say that the Son of Man is? He asks. But in posing this question, Jesus is not interested in hearing a variety of interpretive responses. Some say Jeremiah, others Elijah, others John the Baptist. No, he is encouraging the disciples to step forward in a profession of faith, to recognize the truth that has been revealed in their midst. There are several things about this discussion that are important to note. Firstly, Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man. It's easy to overlook this simple fact. This is the title that Jesus uses most often to refer to himself. In the Gospel of Matthew alone, Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man close to 30 times. For example, when he heals a paralytic man, he does so as evidence that, quote, the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. But this title, the Son of Man, isn't one that Jesus just made up. It was a technical title which related to the anticipated servant of God. The title Son of Man harkens back all the way to the time of the prophets. Daniel, for example, has a vision of the Son of Man coming with the clouds and receiving worship and service from peoples and nations. The Son of Man referred to the divine king who would come to reestablish the glory of Israel. And so, by consistently relating this title to himself, Jesus testifies that he is the very person that Daniel prophesied about. Jesus is the divine king who has come for the purpose of liberation 
and redemption. Now, the kingship of Jesus is only heightened when we recognize that this discussion happens as he and the disciples journey through the region of Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was the capital of Herod Philip's reign, and it was dedicated to the rule and the authority of Caesar. In fact, previously, Herod the Great built this ornate temple to honor and affirm the overall lordship of Caesar. Romans believed that Caesar was divine, that he was the son of God. He wasn't just emperor or king. He was also Lord. The cry of the Romans was Caesar is Lord. So it's significant that this affirmation that Jesus was the divine king occurs in this region, which is dedicated to a human king and a faulty God. And so simply by asking, who do people say that the son of man is? Jesus is pointing to himself as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Occasionally, skeptics suggest that Jesus never assumed divine status for himself. Yet the mere use of this title, son of man, betrays this very suggestion. Because Jesus is abundantly clear about his identity as the Davidic king. But of course, when Jesus asks, who do people say that the son of man is? He's not interested in what other people have to say about him. The concern of Jesus' heart is how he is received by his followers, which is why following this exchange, Jesus asks the disciples then, and he asks the disciples now, what about you? Who do you say that the Son of Man is? Who do you say that I am? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Who is Jesus for you? Is Jesus simply someone that you hear about on Sunday mornings? Is Jesus simply a character in a story? Or is Jesus your Lord? The point of this exchange is, Jesus is who he is. He doesn't change based on who we think he might be. The question that we ask ourselves is not, you know, who do I think Jesus is? But rather, who has Jesus revealed himself to be? We are called to open our lives to him as he comes to us. This is what Peter does. When Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God, Jesus says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Through openness and prayer, Peter responds to the divine revelation of God's identity in Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit that opened his heart to this deeper understanding. So we are called to open our lives to him as he comes to us. Yes, it's good to investigate the claims of Jesus, to dig deep into the Bible and learn as much as we can about what Jesus said and, and why he said it. But intellectual knowledge of Jesus isn't enough. If we wish to truly know Jesus, we must allow the Holy Spirit to open our hearts to his presence. And so if you are someone who would like to take a step forward in knowing Jesus and open yourself to his presence, then I invite you to simply pray this prayer. Jesus, I want to know who you are. I may have a lot of questions, but I recognize that I can't fully know you unless you come to me. Please reveal yourself to me, speak to me, and help me to know you. I open my heart to your presence and to your voice. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Hey. 
Hey, homeschool families. Are you looking for a podcast that can provide you with inspiration and practical tips for your homeschooling journey? Look no further than the Homeschooling Families podcast by Teach Them Diligently. I'm Leslie Nunnery, and I invite you to join me and some incredible guests as we discuss topics such as curriculum choices, homeschool organization, parenting, marriage, and faith. We pray this podcast will be a valuable resource for your family. Listen now on your favorite podcast platform or at lifeaudio.com.